So, you've posed the survivor skeleton to your new model and made sure it was able to move its limbs accordingly. You also prepared the materials in the game so that you can view it in the model viewer. I should state that if you are watching this as a first time viewer who hasn't done this yet, this video isn't for you. Yet. Anyway, you load it up and your model is a broken mess. This is progress. But why is this happening? The skeleton has the bones placed in the correct places. Why are they out of their place? If I import the survivor's T-pose as an animation for our new character, I get the same result. But when I import Rochelle by herself, the survivor I'm replacing, it becomes clear. Our new character is having their bones repositioned in the same place Rochelle had hers at. This is because of how animations work in Source. They not only affect how bones rotate, but also how they are positioned or located at. Our new model was just trying to go back to the old positions. We don't want that, but how do we fix this? This is where the size proportion trick comes into play. This trick, discovered and created by Captain Big Butt, in basic terms, makes a new animation that plays on top of all the other animations. This new animation corrects the position of our bones back to where we want them to be. So how do we make this animation? First, we'll need some files from Zekmakal's website, where a download is provided. Declare Sequences. We'll also get, although it isn't necessary, Perl, and a Perl script by Jazz McNade. I'll go over more later. But I should mention that most detail about this will be in both my guide and Captain Big Butt's guide in the description below. I'll also go over making an important file with the Perl script and without using Perl. Since my mod is for Rochelle, I'll be using the Rochelle Declare Sequence QCI file. Place that in the same area where your QC file is. Open it up and make sure that both Declare Sequence Producer and Declare Sequence Ragdoll are deleted from the list. Producer is Rochelle's name in the game's files, and other survivors follow along with their own names. So, Nick is Gambler, Ellis is Mechanic, Bill is Namvet, and so on. Basically, whoever it is that you're working with, make sure you deleted their name and the ragdoll from the QCI file. After the last stand update, you won't need Francis's or Lewis's declare sequence files because they're already included in their QC files. Next, open your QC file and scroll down until you see the two include model lines. That's where our survivor gets their animations from. I have a notepad that has the lines of code we'll be using to apply the proportion trick that will also be in the description. Make sure that you paste it below the include model lines. We'll have to edit a few lines here. First is the top line. This is calling for our declare sequence file, so rename it to the same name as the QCI. If you're working on Lewis or Francis, you can delete this top line. Next, there's a custom model name that we have to add. This is just your custom character. In my case, my new character is named Tron underscore ref. So I'll just input that name here. There's one more file the proportion trick needs in order to work, and that's the reference file. To make that, we first need to create another file that I like to call the base skeleton. Open another instance of Blender and import the original survivor you're replacing. So in my case, I'm importing Rochelle. Delete her mesh. To save some file space, I'm also going to delete unnecessary bones. Those being jiggle bones and helper bones. Don't worry too much about this. It's not required. After that, go into pose mode and select every bone by pressing A, then press I. Select Loc Rotate. This adds keyframes to all her bones for both locational values and rotational values, making her skeleton an animation. Export it, and there's our base skeleton. This will be used as a reference to create our... Uh, our reference file. <laughs> I'll be renaming my base skeleton to Rochelle Base. You can name it whatever you want, just remember that that's the base skeleton of your character. To make sure that this won't break the survivor's hand, open the base skeleton in Notepad++, or any other text editor, and do the same warped right hand fix. You know, look for the weapon bone and set the first three values to zero. I'll also delete the 
time one list, as we only need one frame of animation. No need for two. Now we can make the reference file. I'll first go over how to make it with the Perl script. With the script and base skeleton files in the same place as the QC, click here and type CMD. This will open the command prompt in the same folder where all the files are at. Next, input the following. Perl, reference creator .pl, the name of your base skeleton, in my case, Rochelle underscore base dot SMD, and the name of the new character, which for me is Tron underscore ref dot SMD. If you press enter and get no errors in return, you'll see that a new file called output was created. There's our reference file. It should be noted that in the description where I provided the list of lines that you would copy and paste into your QC file, the name for the reference is already looking for a file called output. You can change that to whatever you want, but make sure that at least those names, both the file name and the name in the QC, match. Now I'll go over making the reference file without Perl. Open Blender and load up your custom model. Import the base skeleton you made earlier as an animation for your model. And you'll see that they look just as broken as before. This is good. We're almost done. Go into pose mode and select everything with A. Now press the combination Alt R. This will reset the rotations of your bones back to how you pose them for your new model. With everything still selected, press I and select Loc Rotate. And there's our reference file. Here, you'll see me rename the animation to Reference. And just to be sure, I'm going to import the output file created by the Perl script and see if there's anything different. Well, the only thing different here is the name, so which way's better? I think it comes down to preference. Perl requires you installing it, along with you copying the same script for every mod you make. But it can be very fast after the setup, as all you'll need to do after the first time creating it is just press up and enter. Without it, we'll require more time to recreate it if your main model doesn't look right, but you won't have to install anything. With that out of the way, we can now compile and test. And just like that, our new model's fixed. Now granted, there's more to it depending on what kind of model you're working with. In this example, I used an older model where the limbs detach from each other. This means that I didn't have to work on helper bugs. There's much more to go over, and if you're stuck on something with the proportion trick, check out both my guide and Captain Big Butt's guide down below. With that being said, I hope that having this visual aid made some things more clear for those who are having difficulty understanding before. Thanks for watching, and good luck modding!